Hurricane Helene weakened to a tropical storm over Georgia with maximum sustained winds of 70 miles per hour early Friday, the National Hurricane Center said. Helene continues to weaken while moving farther inland over Georgia. The storm was about 40 miles east of Macon and about 100 miles southeast of Atlanta, moving north at 30 miles per hour at 5 a.m., the center in Miami reported. The storm made landfall in northwestern Florida as a Category 4 storm as forecasters warned the enormous system could create a nightmare storm surge and bring dangerous winds and rain across much of the southeastern U.S. There were at least three storm-related deaths. City officials in Tampa, Florida held a news conference on Friday morning and said police and fire department personnel were using boats to rescue people from Davis Island, which is a part of the city. We want to remain focused on our safety and well-being of every member in this community. We have responded to over 200 medical and fire-related calls, said Fire Chief Barbara Tripp. Our high-rescue vehicles can't even get on Davis Island, said the city's mayor, Jane Castor. So the only way we're getting people off of the island right now is by boat. We want to remain focused on our safety and well-being of every member in this community. We have responded to over 200 medical and fire-related calls, anywhere from power lines down to burning vehicles, burning homes, and as well as any traffic accident, as well as serious medical calls. We currently are assisting temp police department with rescuing personnel. We have four John boats that's out there as well, uh, continue to do um, rescue from off of uh, Davis Island as well as South Tampa. But the water on Davis Island, our high rescue vehicles can't even get on Davis Island. So that's, you know, that flooding was what we had warned everyone about. So the, the only way we're getting people off of the island right now is by boat. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken used an address to members of the U.N. Security Council Tuesday to slam Russia for blatant violations of U.N. resolutions over its invasion of Ukraine. Russia is the aggressor. Ukraine, the victim. Russia fights for conquest. Ukraine fights for survival. If countries stop supporting Russia, Putin's invasion would soon come to an end, Blinken told the council members. Blinken also accused China of providing support for Russian aggression against its neighbor. Ahead of the meeting, it emerged the U.S. will send Ukraine an undisclosed number of medium-range cluster bombs and an array of rockets, artillery, and armored vehicles in a military aid package totaling about $375 million. Officials expect an announcement on Wednesday, as global leaders meet at the U.N. General Assembly, and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky uses his appearance there to shore up support and persuade the U.S. to allow his troops to use long-range weapon S to strike deeper into Russia. The following day, Zelensky meets with President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in Washington. These actions by Iran, North Korea, and Russia have violated multiple Security Council resolutions. Resolutions that Russia voted for and as a permanent member, has a special responsibility to enforce. This is also not a one-way street. The more Russia relies on their support, the more Iran and North Korea extract in return. And the more Putin gives to Pyongyang and Tehran, the more he exacerbates threats to peace and security, not just in Europe, but in the Indo-Pacific, in the Middle East, all around the globe. As North Korea ramps up its military support for Russia, Putin has reciprocated with military commitments and with money. The two countries recently revived a treaty pledging to provide military assistance if either is invaded. In March, Russia used its veto to end the work of the UN panel of experts on the DPRK, which for 14 years had monitored the regime's nuclear and ballistic missile programs. Russia's banks, are helping North Korea evade sanctions, freeing up more funds for its unlawful weapons programs. North Korea and Iran are not the only ones aiding and abetting Russia. China, another permanent member of this council, is the top provider of machine tools, microelectronics, and other items that Russia is using to rebuild, to restock, to ramp up 
its war machine, and sustain its brutal aggression. Now, some may ask how the United States or any other country helping Ukraine defend itself can criticize countries for providing military support to Russia. There is a profound difference. Russia is the aggressor, Ukraine the victim. Russia fights for conquest, Ukraine fights for survival. If countries stop supporting Russia, Putin's invasion would soon come to an end. If countries stop supporting Ukraine, Ukraine could soon come to an end. This brings me to the second step that members of this council can take. One of the council's primary responsibilities is seeking to peacefully resolve conflicts. As President Zelensky has said, no one wants peace more than Ukraine. The United States also wants to end this conflict. And before Putin launched his full invasion, we used every tool we could to try to prevent it, including right here at the Security Council. But the way the Council seeks to end this conflict matters. The UN Charter is crystal clear on this point. When fulfilling its responsibilities, the Security Council, and I quote, shall act in accordance with the purpose and principles of the United Nations, end quote. In other words, we must seek a peace that upholds rather than undermines the UN's core tenets. That's why all of us here have a responsibility to support Ukraine's call for a just and lasting peace to end Russia's war of aggression. A just and lasting peace must affirm the principles of sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence. A just and lasting peace must preserve Ukraine's right to choose its own path, its own allies, its own future. A just and lasting peace requires Ukraine's full participation and assent. A just and lasting peace must support Ukraine's reconstruction and recovery, with Russia paying to fix the damage it's caused. A just and lasting peace must address both accountability and reconciliation.